What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're making another tier list and we're going straight into it again, especially with all the changes since on the last tier list. So much as has happened. We're going to break it all down through the ISO changes all the way to the neon changes to the quality of life updates to someone like Ray's. It's all here. So let's get right into the tier list and we're going to start off with Duelist. So first things first, when it comes to Jet, Jet at the current moment will always be S tier at, until they completely nerf her to the ground. It's just the reality, especially how she's so much powerful with the op and how she's just one of the best entry uh, duelists in the game. Until they nerf her dash, she will probably be an S tier agent. And I might just skip ahead. I'll do Raze as well. Raze is also another S tier agent. Basically, for the exact same factors, I set removing the op standard. Raze is just so good, especially with the mobility. Next, we got ISO. And ever since the ISO nerfs, I will say I haven't seen that many ISOs. However, but I can definitely confirm ISO is not as strong as he is before. And thank God, ISO in his prime was way too strong, way too annoying to fight against. And the fact that, oh my God, it's just unreliable. Like it literally took away the opping availability. And it was, there was no point of opping, especially with ISO, because you know ISO is just going to run it down. And if ISO sees you, one taps you, it's all over. Especially at the high ranks, ISO was so dominant. If you didn't have an ISO on your team, you probably had a huge disadvantage in that game. Next, we got Phoenix. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, if you saw my live stream a couple days ago, I literally said and I'll still hold it to this right now. Phoenix is not that good. The only good aspect about his kit is his flash. Probably either the best flash or second best flash in the game. So I'm just going to put Phoenix at B tier for now. You can, I can see an argument for A, but I think ISO, Raze, and Jet are definitely a lot stronger than Phoenix are. Next, we got Neon. Um, Neon herself especially after the changes neon neon's tricky because neon kind of suffers from the exact same thing astra does where if you don't have a competent team neon is going to get shut down pretty easily it's really hard to solo dominate a game with just neon without competent teammates if you have competent teammates neon could be an s tier agent however without competent teammates you're not going to get the exact same amount of value so I'm going to put Neon probably at A tier for there, like a good happy neutral. She still has the ability to dominate games. She just doesn't have the stopping power or the domination power like someone like Raze and Jet does. She's almost there though. Don't get me wrong. She is almost there. Next we got Yoru. And Yoru is, again, the sky's the limit for Yoru. In a perfect world and most controversial, I would put Yoru at S tier. And probably the best Yoru players are definitely like they definitely make this agent look like an S tier agent. But in reality, there's only four people in the world can actually make this. Uh, I can actually make Yoru an S tier agent. But at the current moment, I still think based around his kit and the flexibility that he has around getting in and out and the quick rotations with his kit, he's a good happy A tier. Next, we have Reyna. And this might be a hot, like again, this might be a hot topic. Reyna, I don't think brings that much value to her team other than getting kills and that's it like you reyna relies on getting kills to get value but you're not always guaranteed a kill around right so i want to put reyna at beats here you can definitely make an argument for bub stomping agents definitely a potential for s tier the problem is i'm thinking about the whole like the whole rank wise where it's like yeah she has she brings value to a team when you have good aimers but that's it she doesn't bring like the value of neon is one very hard done to dodge. Yoru has the quick rotations and such. Jet has a quick dash and entry plus knives. Ray's has her ult, her buggy ult. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but um, and then the quick mobility around her kit. Reyna doesn't really have that. She really just relies on aim duels and that's it. Okay, next we're under controllers. I'm gonna have to start out with Brim at D tier problem with Brim is he's very outdated and there's only one map that he's actually quite dominant on. Unfortunately, the iPad is too limited. Unless you're Brim, one trick Molly lineup, Larry or something like that, where you have lineups for everywhere, potentially with the Brim Molly. I can't really make an argument. The reason why Brim is actually 
good except on bind but other than that i think brim is fine where he is he unfortunately he's just an outdated character to a certain degree next we have clove and their self they're okay i wouldn't say they're the most dominant person in the game definitely has the ability to run off and dominate some lobbies kind of like reina does but i would probably rather choose other agents in the controller position and then clove they have the possibility to like dominate a game but i wouldn't say they bring that much value compared to what a and s tier do they're definitely above average uh sorry not i would say they're just above average agents the problem is you see a lot of smurfs and you see a lot of like really good players uh, playing clove problem is clove gets outshined by other agents in our class like omen and astra but that's my personal opinion next we have harbor and i'll i'll actually do harbor and viper together viper's going to be b tier as well the problem with viper is i would say her wall is really repressive her molly is really good the problem is the snake bites but maybe because i i was a viper person but i kind of stopped playing viper as soon as they got rid of the second snake bike but at the same time she is definitely still really good I just wouldn't say she as quite as dominant as what she used to be. I would just say Harb at the current moment is just a bit worse than Viper. I'm not saying that a Viper doesn't have any value at all. A Viper Harbor comp is super annoying, especially on Icebox. If you ever run into that, dodge. <laughs> I would say that. It's just so annoying to fight against. Definitely Harbor brings a lot of value to their team. Problem is, it's not really a solo comp solo controller agent you really want to combine harbor with another controller but you don't really see that in ranked as often unless somebody just wants to install a clove because they're a one trick next we have omen omen is probably the only s tier controller in my personal opinion omen is just so good he is the equivalent of a duelist within the uh, controller role he can smoke he can flash and he can get tp in and out in the, into places he's basically jet with that like but the the tp is the dash instead but he has two tps i omen is just way too good at the current moment and i won't be surprised if there's definitely going to be some nerfs to his flash or his tps in the near future next we have astra and you know me i'm a huge astra fan your boy is an astra one trick no not even i can play every agent in this game but besides the point I have dominated at the uh, immortal level and the radiant level with Astra, but for good reason. Astra is an A tier agent. The problem is nobody plays her. And so it's just so easy to dominate because nobody knows how to outplay her. Next, we have initiators. Initiators, right now, at the current moment, uh, like, I will say this initiators is probably the most balanced faction in the whole game. You can make an argument for any i would say any initiator for a or b tier or s tier it just depends on the map and depends on the comp by first impressions i'm actually going to make initiators pretty quick the only s tier initiator i would say at the current moment is gecko gecko can constantly just reuse his util over and over again the problem is with most geckos on the console level they just throw their flash and stuff once next i i if I could, I would put the rest of the initiators in A tier. It just really depends on the map. But all around, I'm going to put Sova at A. I'm going to put Fade at A. And the rest are going to be at B. Uh, for Sova, he's just all around good. There's nothing ba bad about Sova. Like, he hard counters ISO for a reason. Especially with the shock darts. Uh, Fade delays um, hard rushes, especially on a site, and can delay enemies from pushing onto site and help your teammates rotate a lot faster with that delay breach himself is i would say kind of overrated but also underrated on console like console rank not everybody plays breach actually i would say out of 10 games i might see one breach player even though he's actually quite good on console compared to a pc his flashes are pretty good i believe they kind of like delayed the flash just a bit on console compared to pc now we have ko ko is quite good um i don't have much to say about ko you just don't see him that often and a lot of his value and especially with sky sky got nerfed hard for a reason because he, she was way too good for too long with the rechargeable flashes 
However, they perfectly mended Sky and Kale into a way where if you want to get value out of your flashes, you need to be setting up your teammates and you can't solo use your flashes to get value. Next, we have the Sentinel roll. And Sentinel roll, again, I'm a huge fan of the Sentinel roll. Uh, there's not there much for the say. Like Chamber is a solid B tier. The only thing with Chamber is his util when it comes to his Sentinel prowess is not that good. After all the nerfs, definitely one trip. Like the trip is, is annoying, but it's easily counterable. The delay is quite good where it's pretty easy to shoot compared to like other uh, Sentinel equipment. Uh, next, we have Deadlock. Deadlock's right now, I'm going to put it at C tier. Um, especially how the meta has developed when uh, ranked. Deadlock can definitely win you games. The problem is, I think it's only a couple maps. Two maps that I think that Deadlock's quite dominant on, and that's uh, Abyss and that's Bind. Those are the two maps that I can think of off the top of my head where I don't want to mess with a Deadlock and maybe Ascent as well. But again, that's half of the pool. I kind of kind of curious about more Deadlock stuff. I definitely want to experiment with her more, especially on um especially in the future. The problem is she's very limited of what she can do on the offensive side. And the defensive side, she just gets outclassed by two other agents. Or actually three other agents within her class that provide a bit more value, but in different ways. Next we have Cypher. I will make this argument to my, the day I die. Cypher is definitely the hardest agent to play in this game for good reason. Because he is an S tier agent. It, I think other than one map, and even on that one map, Cypher is quite good, especially with some of the setups. And I believe that and I'm talking about Ascent. But other than Ascent, Cypher belongs on pretty much every map. And especially the ones that are not in rotation, like Fracture. The maps that are not in the rotation are like dominant by Cypher. Next we have Killjoy. And I Killjoy is definitely can be used on pretty much all maps. The main problem with Killjoy in particular is the radius of which her equipment is used. If they remove that, Killjoy is definitely an S tier agent, like Cypher. However, especially with the restriction to her radius and stuff, I'm going to put her at A tier. Uh, next we have Sage. Um, there's a reason why I have kept F tier um, empty for a particular reason. This was caused a lot of dislikes on my last tier list. And I will still make this argument to this day. Sage belongs in F tier. She's probably the worst agent in the game. I would, anybody in her role, any other sentinel in a role, I would rather pick over. I would rather have chamber. I would rather have deadlock on her worst maps. I just don't think Sage brings any value on the defensive side, especially when it comes to lurkers. As a person who plays Astra, who plays Cypher, who lurks a lot, I love it when the Sage is on the other side because I know I'm going to be having a nice lurking game. However, when there's a Sage on my team, I have to be self conscious constantly of the flank, especially with Sage because Sage only again blocks off chokes but as soon as that wall is destroyed or even a crack of the wall is destroyed zero value but that's my hot take uh probably not everybody agrees with me but i think this is probably the safest bet i have so that's it for the video everybody peace out have a wonderful time hopefully everybody enjoys the video in the meantime thank you so much for all the uh, support in the previous months don't be afraid to hit that like and subscribe. And if you have any comments or disagreements with my tier list, don't be afraid to comment down below. So peace out, everybody. Have a wonderful find. Love you all.